The ACCA advanced audit and assurance exam from 2024 onwards. Firstly, the exam will be 3 hours and 15 minutes. So this means that 195 minutes in total. So instead of dividing 195 minutes into 100 marks in total, what I would do is to divide into 80 technical marks. So these marks are quite objective indeed. So this means that you will need to get 47 audit and related standards right, 36 international financial reporting standards right, and two ethical documents right from the ACCA and also the IES per code. So you can get these technical marks. There are the remaining 20 professional marks, so I will interpret these as the subjective marks in the actual exam. So later on, I will show you how these marks are calculated. Now, if I were to divide 195 minutes into 80 technical marks, so this means that the mark allocation will be 2.4 minutes per mark. So my approach would be to advise my students to use the deadline approach so when they sit this exam. So before they write any exam answers, make sure that they plan the deadline for each requirement of the AAA exam so later on they can have enough time to practice and to answer all these questions. So nowadays from 2024, the ACCA AAA syllabus has included the importance of the role of the engagement quality reviewer. So just to make sure they understand that quality control will be a very key topic nowadays in the AAA. At the same time, the exposure draft will be tested in the AAA. However, the examining team of the AAA specifically said that the exposure draft will be tested to the extent that referring to the articles from the student's accountant. So make sure that you will download the app from the ACCA regarding the student accountant. So, and then search for, for example, exposure drafts and the student accountant will direct you to a particular page whereby you can get access to the latest articles published by the ACCA regarding the exposure draft. So read those articles will be absolutely enough for you to pass this paper. So the syllabus from the AAA, for example, it has divided the syllabus from A to I. Firstly, part A, the regulatory environment, talking about, for example, the standard ISA and money laundering issues and audit committee. Section B, related to the ethics part, okay, referring back to the ACCA Code of Ethics and the IFAC Code of Ethics as well. And part C, talking about the quality management part. So usually, we will be tested in the question 2 in the AAA exam. And section DOC, talking about the planning and conducting the audit. So there will be lots and lots of ISA coming into it. And section E talks about completion and reporting stage. So for example, the completion stage, such as the assessment of the going concern, assessment of subsequent event according to ISA 560 and performing the final analytical procedures and so on. And reporting stage, just some things that you have already recapped from the ACCA F8 or AA or the shown study before. There might be other assignments, so for example, the evaluation of the cash flows forecasts or projected business plan, projected financial statements, due diligence, forensic audit, audit of social and environmental uh, stuff, uh, so, and also the public sector audit and so on. So these might be tested in the exam, so usually it would be in the question two, for example. There might be exposure jobs, okay, so make sure that you refer to the latest students accountant articles from the ACCA. Professional skills will be 20 marks there, and also using Excel and Word Processor will also be very key there. Now, here I will be showing you, on average, how exam questions are structured, okay? So firstly, the ACCA Advanced Audit and Assurance Exam will be divided into the Section A and Section B questions. All of them are compulsory. 
50 marks for the question 1 in the section A, question 2 and 3 each with 25 marks. So make sure that you are aware that the technical marks for the question 1 will be 40 marks, whereas there will be 20 technical marks for question 2 and 20 technical marks for question 3. On the right hand side, you also have got the professional marks being 10 for question 1 and 5 each for the question 2 and question 3 there. Now, according to my experience, I just summarise so what sort of typical areas that might appear in each of these questions. I must say that this will be just on average, doesn't necessarily mean that in the upcoming sitting exam that these areas will certainly come up. For example, in the question 1, the risk of material misstatement or audit risk, business risk, plant audit procedures and potential professional issues that might be tested at the planning stage of the audit. So usually 16 to 18 marks for the risks of material misstatement. I'll show you how to get these easy marks in a second. For the section B, usually it will be a very practical practice management and ethics question. So for example, you may be given a case that you are about to sign the engagement letter with the particular client's company. But what sort of matters that you need to consider before you uh, decide to work for this client? So uh, very, very practical issues that need to be built in. And also the completion reporting stage. So sometimes the order for question two and question three uh, may be swapped and uh, make sure that you're ready for that. Now, here, I would like to show you my analysis of the past exam paper, okay, from each and every sitting, okay, from 2020 September up to June 2023. So you can get a feel for what sort of questions that may be tested in each uh, of a section here of the AAA. For example, in September and December 2020, the audit risk procedure on IFRS 8, segmental reporting, and also related to social environmental issues and audit of data analysis has been tested. Uh, and in 2021 March, you got business and audit risk, audit procedures on fair value changes, and audit planning implications. So for example, again, related to different KPIs similar to the last sitting. In 2021 September, so for example, the initial audit considerations, audit risk procedures on PP&E and conflict of interest has been tested. In 2022, the risk of material misstatement on impairment of non-current assets per the IAS number 36, money laundering and also acceptance procedures, sort of things before we work uh, as the auditor for the new kinds has been tested. And then from September 2022 onwards, professional marks are built in. For example, this is risk, risk of material misstatement, audit procedures on the consultation account, and also the no car issue according to the ISA 250 has been tested. Again, we've got a communication mark here, and I will break it down later on then. December 2022, business, and also risk of material misstatement, and also the outsourcing stuff according to the ISA 402 regarding the service organisation, and also related to the procedure on the holiday pay obligation, okay, so just to be the accrued uh, expenses, something like that, has been tested. June 2023, the risk of material misstatement and, okay, related to the inventory ethical issues has been tested. Right, okay, now, what sort of things that may have been tested in the question two, for example, in the past? So, client acceptance issues, quality controls, and so on, have been tested, okay, each and every time, quite similar, okay, each and every time, though. How about for question three, or the report, or the report, or the report, subsequent amends, or the report again, evaluation of assumptions, we 
regarding the management estimates uh, and also all the report, all the report and the internal control. Okay, so it has been tested. So each and every time, uh, it may be different regarding the audit report. So sometimes the general criticism of the audit report or the matters to be considered in the audit report. For example, in June 2023, that the key audit matter paragraph has been tested. Now, what sort of ISA and the IFA has been tested in each and every exam setting? Uh, so, for example, I would say that I-16, I-36 for PPE and impairments and also intangibles are very, very important there. Uh, so, each and every time, so these standards have been tested. So, sometimes, sometimes the revenue, sometimes the fair value uh, measurements according to IFA 13 and so on. IFA 16 leases has been tested. Regarding ISA specifically, the uh, ISA 600 related to group will be tested in each and every sitting, and also the ISA related to the audit report will be tested in each and every sitting. So make sure that we are ready for that. And also ISA 402, very, very commonly been tested in the exam. Now, um, let's see the professional marks here. I would say that in the question one, four elements of the professional marks will be tested, total will be 10. So in the question one, you need to get the communication right. So there will be four marks for that. So in the exam, the examiner requires you to prepare for the breathing note, making sure that you've got a heading breathing note. You need to answer all requirements. You need to tailor your answer to a specific case. You need to quote the ISA, not the number, but the detailed requirement from there. And leave a line for each point that you've made. So if you can do that, of course, you will get four of the communication mark right. Uh, in the question one, there will be analysis evaluation. And from my perspective, though, in order to get these professional marks, you will need to demonstrate your understanding of the materiality. I will show you how in a second. You will need to make a conclusion about all those risks of material misstatement, which are significant. I'll show you the exam technique later on. You will also need to demonstrate your skepticism skill, right? So, for example, you properly identify all those risks and applying the right materiality level. Yes, you will get another professional mark. Finally, you will need to get the commercial acumen skill right. So, for example, especially that when talking about the business risks, what would be the implications? You will need to explain that in the context of the case information. However, in the question two and question three, there are only three elements of the professional skill mark there. So, for example, the analysis evaluation again. However, unlike in the question one, in order to score the professional mark in the section B, you need to dive in deeper. So, for example, you may be provided with the provision liability. You will need to demonstrate your understanding that uh, in what circumstances that provision liability can be recognised and how it's going to be calculated. So, making sure that you obtain further evidence regarding this. Scepticism, on the other hand, always remember in the question two and question three, that so always focus on the importance of auditors generating all the evidence before you use the evidence from a third party and finally from the internal management. To get the commercial acumen skills marks right, you will need to explain the impact of accepting the engagement and also the wider issues, particularly impacting the firm related to quality control. So always mention that in the actual exam so you can get these marks very easily. So, from my perspective though, always read the examiner's report. I've taken the examiner's report uh, from the recent sitting. So, for example, in March, June 2023, as you can see, the strength, yes, nowadays, students seem to apply exam technique more properly than they were in the past. However, a few weaknesses happened. Very many of these students providing very general answers, 
okay? not specifically tailored to the case and not specifically explaining the implications. And not enough risk analyses, not applying the appropriate steps in there. Sometimes they'll misinterpret the requirement. So, for example, regarding the fair value in particular, we need to rely on the expert's work. Instead of calculating a fair value on our own. So if that's the case then, the examiner in this paper would usually ask you regarding the audit procedure on the fair value of certain things. So make sure that you will not misinterpret the requirements in this paper. Now, it's very important that you get the right exam approach because here for the APC, we've taught many and many AAA students and they've passed this paper the first time with our help. Now, our exam approach is different. Firstly, I will emphasize the importance of general answer approach. You will need to adopt this approach so you can score high marks in the actual exam. I will introduce my own four element principle in any general questions in the AAA. Making a point is absolutely not enough. You need to quote the relevant ISA and to make your own comment where not the ISA has been followed. You will then need to demonstrate your understanding why we need to follow this ISA and the implications of not doing that and additional matters to be considered as the final element. As you can see in the marking scheme, there will always be one mark per sentence. So make sure that you write enough sentences but not with too many points. So for example, if you are given 10 marks, just give me perhaps four to five ideas, but for each idea, write enough sentences, at least for two sentences in there, so you can score very high marks in the AAA. Regarding the second type of questions, for example, commenting or evaluating on the audit risk or the risk of material misstatement, Again, using four elements principle, but here emphasizing the importance that you compare the figure with the materiality level that you've set before, quoting the IFRS requirement without the IFRS number, and then making sure that you specify the impact on different financial statements. So, for example, profit's been over or understated, asset under overstated, or perhaps disclosure requirement. So, for example, under disclosure risk. I touched the concept of materiality. Make sure on my right hand side, in the question one, you will get the easy marks right. At the very start, you will need to calculate the materiality range. So, for example, taking the profit before tax of a client's company and times by 5 and 10% respectively. And then as a step two, I would like to choose the lower figure, okay? from the examiner's preference point of view. And they will need to make a comment of that. So for example, why do we pick up a lower figure for materiality? Why are we going to be checking more balances and transactions in this client's company? Because this may be our first time audit. Perhaps this industry may be relatively complicated. So we need to watch out. And therefore, a lower figure will be picked up. However, in the conclusion part in the question one, so always make sure that you close the followings. Pick two risk of material misstatements that you evaluated before, but these risk of material misstatement would be significant. So what you need to do is to refer to the ISO 315 related to the significant risk of material misstatement that touching the concept of inherent risk factors. So for example, you may be saying that this risk would be uh, very risky and very important, very likely to occur because there would be uncertain due to the management estimates. There will be different ways that we can compute this figure and with different estimates. So for example, the number of years of the asset, it will give us different results. And this is why I think this will be quite significant. Okay, so make sure you put two and put one will be less significant. And then making an overall response. Uh, so for example, assigning more of the experienced staff when doing the audit. 
to reduce that risk. The final exam technique related to ethics, three steps here, making sure you quote the steps, uh, for example, the threat, for example, intimidation threat, and per the ACCA code of ethics, and finally the safeguards. So my exam approach will certainly help you boost the number of marks in your actual AAE exam. So finally, I'd like to take you through a real past exam question, for example, the section A, and we can see that we've got the background information here, and then you will need to click the exhibit on the left-hand side, make sure they use the highlight function to make sure they answer all requirements, both in the briefing notes format as the word processor, and also making all of your calculations in the spreadsheet. Clicking the exhibit, as you can see, you will see the detail requirement. Firstly, copy and paste to your word processor so you can answer them all and use subheadings, for example. So, for example, that would be a question one there. Now let's move on to question two. If we move on to question two there, and we will see that there will be two 25 marker question. Again, the case information background on the right hand side, clicking on the exhibit on the left hand side, and then you will see the detail requirement there. Make sure that you copy and paste the requirements into your word processor. Make sure that you're aware of the word and. So this is how the exam looks like, and I hope you enjoyed this section for just to be a quick summary of all the things that you need to know to pass your ACCA AAA. Just a brief introduction of myself, my name is Steve Chen, the fellow member of ACCA, the current ACCA Global Exam Marker. I've been helped thousands of students pass the ACCA exams, and I enjoy teaching the IFIS financial management, performance management, and audit related papers. And I'm sure my approach will certainly help you qualify very soon. I look forward to seeing you in the next of our section of our exam journey. Bye for now then. Best of luck. APC, accounting for your future.